and I just remind everyone this is a virtual meeting on Zoom as per Governor Baker's March 10th, 2020 order entitled order superseding certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, and it, it still runs the same as any um, public meeting, a public hearing, of the Conservation Commission, uh, the chair will read the ad and then proceed with the hearing. Um, the, the, the chair will ask the commissioners if they have anything to say, and then he'll ask the public if they have anything to say they want to add. Um, you can either say in chat that you want to speak or you, you can unmute yourself and make yourself known. Um, uh, otherwise, if you could just mute yourself until your public hearing and, and your opportunity to speak, we'd appreciate it so there's no background noise um, interrupting the public hearing. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Landis. I spiel. Uh, this is uh, Tunnel Walpole, request for determination of applicability, Conservation Commission public hearing. According to Massachusetts, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, Town of Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Known as hereby given the intent of Wall Street development, determine if land located at map 19 lot 183 Pinnacle Drive is land formerly associated with a historic mill complex and therefore not subject to the regulations as work in the riverfront area. Plans are in file at the Conservation Commission office. Public hearing on the above matter will be held at Walpole Town Hall or via virtually accessible video on November 4th, 2020, beginning 7.30 p.m. Contact Al Hershey, walpolemass.gov or 508-660-7253 for Zoom information. All interested persons request to be present. The uh, hearing was opened and continued, and we have a request from the applicant to continue this hearing for 30 days, so that would make it into our March 10th meeting. Um, so what else do we have on a March 10th? Um, at March 10th, we've, we've continued the 32 Starlight Drive um, Al Sarabi project. Uh, Notice of intent uh, is scheduled for 7 o'clock. That's all we have on? Yes. So March 10th. Um, make it 7.15. Sounds good to me. Okay, March. Uh, so we'll make a motion to continue uh, this hearing till March 10th at 7.15. So I'll move. Second. Okay, all in favor. Um, Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Emilio? Emilio? You're I'm muted. Emilio. Sorry, aye. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Betsy. Aye. Al. Aye. Jack. Aye. Okay. So that's that one. Um, the next hearing, let's see, 710. So um, we don't have any minutes of, uh, to vote on at this point. Um, we could do that trails discussion if you want to do that, or is there anything else that we want to need to do before that? Or we could do the extensions. We got those extensions. The extensions. Okay, three of those. Okay. Why don't we do that? Um, okay. The extension for Clark's Pond vegetation management. So I want to move that. So I'll move. move it. Okay. That was uh, Betsy and Al. And all in favor, Bailey? I. Um, how long are you going to extend it for, Jack? I, oh. I, I'm asking three years if the commission will extend the. For how long uh, did you say? Three years. Three years. Okay. So, so included with the motion is a three year extension. That was by um, Al and Betsy. Okay. Um, so, Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack? Aye. 
Okay, we have another one for Turner Pond Vegetation Management. An extension, you also want to do this for three years, Landis? Um, yes, and for anyone who do doesn't know if this is new, what, what these are, are these are um, the order of conditions which allows us to um, treat the ponds, we treat Clark's Pond and, and Turner's Pond um, for uh, invasive species and nuisance species. And in order to get a permit from DEP, we, we need the order. Three years, please. Okay, someone want to move that? So move. Second. That was Alan Betsy. Okay, all in favor, Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack, aye. Okay. Now what is uh, Willett Pond vegetation management? What do we got? Is this? It, it, it's the different? same thing. So the Naponza land holding has, has requested to continue their order of conditions for the Willett Pond vegetative management. They as well um, treat their pond. Uh, so they've asked for an extension. And both, all, all three of these, um, I, I know that the Willett Pond project had uh, requested a proposal from uh, Water and Wetlands LLC, which is a, a new group. Um, they're more local. They're from Upton. Um, they're they're uh, someone who used to work for Solitude Lake Management. They're more they're smaller and they're local. So I got proposals from them as well for Clarks and Turners, and I like their proposal. I like they're local. I like they're not a big huge company, and Solitude Lake Management wasn't all that had some issues last last year so um we're going with them this year the uh, water and wetlands okay so we'll move that back. i'll move it second val and betsy okay all in favor bailey aye doug aye video aye betsy aye al aye Jack, I. Okay. Um, there was a comment from the uh, town administrator that there was, if that was okay to proceed with this, that there was money in the capital budget. Was that confirmed that uh, there's money in the capital budget for the Turner and uh, Clark Pond? Um, yes. The the um, town meeting voted capital for both those ponds last fall. Now, what about uh, who's doing Memorial Pond and Jarvis Pond? Is that still the other company? Right. So Memorial Pond, um, we're, we're still in the process of working on what type of plan it needs. So um, I, I'll be working with uh, Water and Wetlands on that as well. Okay. And what about Jarvis Pond? Who's doing I, I don't know. Jarvis Pond, again, was Solitude Lake Management. That's um, been in the water and sewer department or DPW department. I, I did let Rick know what, what I was doing with the other ponds. So, so that's up to them. Yeah. I'm not sure. So they're aware of what we're doing in the other ponds now. Yes. What about, yes. The, ponds? What about the ponds committee? Are they active uh, now? Um, they, they, they seem to be active in terms of, you know, as far as I, I know, um, Turner's Pond skating. They're still involved and you've kept them in the loop. Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, 710, we have a hearing for echo away number seven. Let me find the right one here. Seven lot three. Echo Ponds here, which one is which? Okay, I got seven. Okay. Town of Walpole Notice of Intent Conservation Commission Public Hearing. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, Town of Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Notice hereby given the intent of Echo Way Estate LLC for the construction of a single family home, related driveway, utilities, and grading at seven Echo Way. Plans are filed at the Conservation Commission office. Public hearing on the above matter will be held in Walpole Town Hall 
via virtually accessible video on February 10th, 2021, beginning 7, 10 p.m. Contact Al Hershey at wolfholmass.gov or 508-660-7253 for Zoom information. All interested persons request to be present. Okay, uh, the time is now 7.11 and uh, representing the applicant. Mr. Chairman, my name is uh, John Glossa, Glossa Engineering 46 East Street in East Walpole. And I'm here representing uh, John Alvaria um, and uh, others who are the owners of the property at uh, Seven Echo Way, Lot 3. Um, for those who are not familiar with Echo Way, it's off of Route 1A down by, I guess, what was maybe most recently Raphael's, used to be Bernardi's and uh, Echo, whatever it was before that. Um, so if you were heading down 1A south of town, um, heading towards Rentham, it's on your right side. Um, it's a four lot subdivision that was uh, um, approved by the planning board I forget exactly when now, but back around 2016 or 2017, um, there was also an order of conditions um, issued by this Conservation Commission for the construction of the roadway, um, some of which is within 100 feet. And there was also a, a stormwater permit that was issued, um, well, in conjunction with the uh, order of conditions. Um, for the same property. So um, now John Oliveria is the owner of the property and um, has already con begun construction on the first two lots, which are the ones that are directly abutting Route 1A. And now we're asking to get an order of conditions um, for the two rear lots of which lot three, number seven, Echo Way is one of them. So this is the lot that's at the end of the cul-de-sac or at the end of the street on the left-hand side. And um, John is proposing, do you want me to try to do the share screen? <laughs> yes. I would think that would be helpful for All anybody right. who doesn't have the uh, plans. Here's where I always get messed up. You've been doing this often enough, John. I would think you'd <laughs> learn by now. I know. <laughs> But they um, are not to be a natural. <laughs> uh, let's see where where did it go to? Because I did oh here it is here. So lot seven. Bailey, if you think you need to chime in. Yeah, so can you guys see that now or no? This is no. About the part that I get messed up on. So Bailey, I went outside of the well, let me just try it again. It's just where to find the thing. It's it's. Well, we don't even see your screen yet. So, um, Landis, <coughs> can you share the screen? Um, it should be on. John, if you're in the Zoom meeting where you see everybody, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh. So the little file thing though down the bottom, Bailey. Now. That, that's your documents. The the yeah. little camera, like the movie camera, all the way to the right is your Zoom meeting the the box that's highlighted all the way oh, nope you passed it what i did yep oh this one that's the zoom meeting yeah but we want to pull up your file right i don't yeah, know so just go into your file if, if you put them on right, I, I put here. them on your desk if you put them on your desktop then they're right there you don't know like i know they are but so now it's in my it's on this disc okay right and it should be I just do date modified, right? And it's right here. There you go. I feel, like I'm gonna, a, hmm? I, feel, I feel like I'm on a progressive commercial. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? I got it. Hooray. Touchdown. Right? You can see right. it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's all right. It's okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> uh, 
this is it here, right? So root one's out to the right over, over root one A. We're gonna Bernardi's. This this right here is Raphael's Bernardi's. Does it have? A, it might have a new name now. I think it's it's been changed hands. So as you can see, it's there's only four lots in this subdivision. So lot three, the next to the last lot on the left. So this is the house that's being proposed. These are the wetlands you can see here. Um, what's been previously constructed is this retaining wall, this drainage basin here, and all of these drainage pipes and all. Um, that was constructed by others. Um, Russ Jones did most of the work here, and then Jay Hockman did the paving here and, and some other work. Um, so, the other thing too that you can see here and that's kind of important this used to be the shell oil uh pipeline easement back here but they gave that up um i'm gonna say in the late 80s or early 90s and this company agt is it agt see right here they kept or they bought from Shell this little 10 foot wide easement, but for some reason they didn't keep it along the property line. So the reason it's important is just I'm trying to keep any grading out of that easement. There's nothing in it, but why sort of poke the bear if, if somebody shows up and says, why are you working in our easement? <clears throat> so it's a proposed single family house here, driveway um, here grading we just have a very small wall here because this side of the building in this part of the rear of the building would be a walkout so the basement floor elevation is the same as the ground elevation here so we just need a little small it's about four foot high wall here here's our compost sock our silk control going around like this we're going to have a stabilized construction entrance here and then, um, as I was explaining to Landis the other day, um, our um, drainage calculations um, <coughs> take into account that these driveways would pitch out to the street for two reasons, one for water quantity, but the other for water quality, so that they pitch out to the street and through a catch basin before they're discharged into the infiltration basin. So we have a little, kind of a drip berm or a little curb or something here. And you can see from the grades that the driveway pitches from the garage um, out to the street. The other thing, Landis, that you asked me about, and I did research it. So I, I have to add all of these houses um, were to have um, cultex for their downspouts. We didn't rely on infiltration from the cultex, but it was just simply dead storage. So I will <laughs> add those to these. And when we get to the one across the street, I'll add it to that. And I'll also tell John Oliveria that he needs to add them to these other two houses up here. Um, it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference in the drainage calculations, but that is how it was approved by the planning board and by this board. So we should follow up with that. It's not a big deal. It's just one inch of uh, rainfall over the size of the buildings. We had six shown on our proposed conditions plan when we did the subdivision, but these houses are actually quite a bit smaller than the um, than the houses we had shown on our proposed conditions plan. You know, we didn't know what the, who was going to build the houses and what the size was, so we just maxed out uh, the whole area. Um, so that needs to be added to the plan. And, um, you know, other than that, you can see we're 25 feet back. These plaques are already shown on the subdivision plan. And then there's two, there's here along the 25 foot. And then there's two here, which are, there's going to be a fence here at the end of the, um, uh, at, at the, <clears throat> the end of the roadway, there's a four foot retaining wall here. So there's a fence and there's where some plaques previously approved to be um, put on that fence. And then all of these, uh, all the disturbed area will be loamed and seeded when the, uh, when the job's done. Um, so I guess with that, 
I mean, there's a few other things I could tell you. You know, it's lot three, it's 23,929 square feet, 125 feet of frontage along Echo Way. And um, this area is the wetland back here. Okay, Landis. Um, so John has covered most that I, I talked to him about. Also, I, when I was looking at the plan today, the distance between the house and the basin, I, I didn't get a chance to measure. Um, and the grades, it, I, I don't know, I was thinking that a split rail fence or, or something there so that there's a sort of distinction between the basin and the person's yard might be a good idea. Yep, sure. It's it's not a huge difference in grade. It's about three feet in grade, but we're, but it makes sense. We can put a we can put a fence there. Yeah, and I, I can see that there's. I mean, it, it, the fence may be on the easement, but I don't think that's a really big issue. Um, but I, yeah, I'd rather see some kind of boundary between the house yard and the basin, especially since there's infiltrators there. No, that makes sense, uh, Landis, to sort of separate it so that um, the um, future owners know that, you know, yeah. there's a basin there and that um, we can even put some kind of plaque on that if you want, if you think it makes sense, you know, drainage easement or something, no dumping or something like that. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, you might move move up. Well, I don't know. The, the plaques are at the base of the walls, right? So they base of the retaining wall, I believe, if I remember out there. So you, you can't really move them up. But I don't know if the, what the commission thinks. Um, I'm just saying to add a couple more, like yeah. right, right, you know, kind of at the top of that little slope where the basin is, just to so somebody knows that. It, didn't that happen here in Walpole? It happened on one of the jobs I did where, you know, the homeowner came along and he filled it in. That, that can happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I think it would you know, be a good maybe idea. Maybe just the same sort of a thing, just a little concrete, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, a I've six seen. by six bound with a plaque on the top that says detention base and no right. alteration or something like that. I think that would be a good, good idea. I, I've, I, I've seen mm -hmm. them filled in. I've seen pools yeah. in them. Um, yeah. yeah. People yeah. don't necessarily yeah. know what yeah. they are. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt just right like one one in here somewhere and then one right in here somewhere. So when they come around their house here, it'd be a, a fence, right? And then a plaque, not on the fence because the fence isn't gonna be there forever, but we'll just put the plaque, you know, a foot above the ground on a, on a six by six uh, concrete bound, um, similar to the, to the, you know, the no disturb uh, plaque. Makes sense, it might help somebody to not fill in the basin. So that's my suggestion and just we'll reference the order of conditions um, for the subdivision, which includes the O&M for that basin in this order. Right, not on the plan, just in, in the order that you're gonna write. Yeah, we'll just yeah. reference it. Yeah, okay. Anything else then, Landis? No, that's it. Okay, Bailey? Okay, Emilio. No comment. Doug. Uh, no questions. Betsy. No comments. Al. It's okay. Okay. Um, question: You're going to locate uh, when you revise your drawing. You're going to show those plaques, and you're going to show where the uh, roof drain cultax are going to be located. Is that right, John? Right, right. Okay. So I'm going to size them based on, I, I was, I have it right here on my desk, actually. I just reviewed again what the drainage calculations were and what was included. And what was included was one inch of um, rainfall from the rooftops went into a cul tech. And so it just took a little of the volume out of the out of the storm. That's all. And that easement, uh, who maintains that easement? Well, the, nobody maintains it. it. The homeowner will maintain it. 
but so what, it's just a matter of you know <coughs> BYA, uh, Mr. Chairman. I can't really show any grading or anything in that because you know it's an easement and unless you want me to find out where AGT is and what I can do, but I'm pretty okay, sure. But, so basically you expect the homeowner will maintain. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be his rear yard. That, so it'll be lawn. It'll be is lawn. That, yeah. Okay. Down to. Okay. Okay. Um, anyone in the audience have any questions or comments, please identify yourself for the record. Actually, Jack, I did have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in that easement, is there a pipe or anything there right now? No. Okay. No, the shell abandoned. Uh, well, I shouldn't say no. There might be a pipe there, but it's abandoned. Shell abandoned it. If you go across the street where uh, Production Road is, they took the, they ripped the pipe right out of the ground. Um, but, uh, a couple of years ago, when I did the car wash on Route One, that's the same pipe. That right. was that, removed. So that's what I was going to ask if that was the same pipe that uh, at the car wash. Yeah, but what the difference is, like where the car wash is, the Shell Oil still has that easement for some reason. Here, Shell Oil gave up the easement. They abandoned it. Um, John Sanzi had all of the documents and he gave them to me. And then he gave me the documents where this AGT um, purchased or somehow acquired this easement um, from um, uh, from Shell, but there's nothing there. There's nothing in there that AGT would. I, John, I don't really why, understand the purpose of it. But. All right, then I have a question. Then why right. label it an easement? It is an easement. AGT has an easement. Shell gave, so Shell had a 20 foot easement going across there. And Shell abandoned it. They hired, I think it was VHB, did the work, all of this work, all these easements and abandoning and all of this paperwork. And, you know, I have all the stuff from the Registry of Deeds and AGT may, kept that easement. It, it makes no sense to me because you can see it just go, it goes onto the um, Raphael's property here. It's like the easement to nowhere. But it exists, so what am I going to do, right? I have to show it. Um, it, it I don't see what purpose it has. And, does it continue off property to the left and the other, the back end? Uh, as far as I know, yeah. But this was all San, this was Sandy's property back here, so I didn't research the abutters property. Mm -hmm. But this this is was and maybe still is Sandy's property. Who was the owner of this whole place, right? So it's just this, to me, it's just this kind of bizarre easement. You know, they may come along someday and have whatever rights they have, they might do something. Certainly they'd have to come in front of you, right? They can't just ignore uh, right. the, the wetlands because. Yeah. Okay, as long as the homeowner is aware of that and we don't know whether the pipe was actually removed or not, um, but it may still be there. Right. That's right. In, in fact, I think it probably is still there. But okay. it's it's a it's an empty pipe. It's been broke. It's been abandoned, removed in in many places, including the car wash, production road. It just it's a pipe. It's under the ground. It, there's okay. nothing running through it. There's so. nothing to indicate that it was removed from this property. Right, and I, I would say it's there because I think if it was, we would have known about it. Yeah, well, it there's been, no, maybe. there's no evidence out there that it was removed. Okay. Um, just probably would be a good idea that the homeowner, uh, property owner, is aware that it's there. I know you show it on the plan, but you might just make a note to advise them that there could be a pipe that's still in there, but then that okay. the easement does exist. And so we, uh, Okay, um, I, I, I'll add that to this plan. And then when we do our as-built plan, we'll the same, you know, we'll say 
Okay. You know, approximate location of buried yep. shell oil pipeline or abandoned shell oil pipeline yep. uh, may may still be in the grounds. Okay. Yeah, I think that just just so the homeowner is aware that that might yep. okay. be something there if he decides to dig it up yeah. or whatever. <laughs> he won't have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, someone, do we know no one from the audience? So someone make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. That was Alan Betsy. Okay, all in favor. Bailey? Aye. Uh, Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Um, what are conditions as noted? And uh, we'll hold that till we get the revised plan. Um, so. Uh, someone make that a motion for the order. So moved. Second. Was Alan Betsy. Okay. All in favor. Bailey. Aye. Doug. Aye. Emilio. Aye. Betsy. Aye. Al. Aye. Jack. Aye. Okay. Thank you. What's next? Um. Echo way number eight. Total Wumpel Notice of Intent, Conservation Commission, a public hearing. Of course, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 of Wetlands Protection Act, Total Wumpel Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Notice where I give the intent of Echo Way Estate LLC for the construction of a single family home with related driveway utilities and grading at eight Echo Way. Plans on file the Conservation Commission office public hearing on the above matter will be held at Walpole Town Hall or by a virtually accessible video on February 10, 2021, beginning 7.20 p.m. Contact El Hershey at walpolemath.gov or 508-660-7253 for Zoom information. All interested persons request to be present. And the time is now 7.33, uh, representing the applicant. So again, Mr. Chairman, uh, my name is uh, John Glossa, Glossa Engineering, 46 E Street in East Walpole, and I'm here representing John Oliveria, the owner of uh, Lot 4, uh, Number 8, Echo Way. So I hit the little camera again, Bailey. The little camera first. Uh, in the bottom of your screen, there should be a tab that pops open with a green box. Oh, I know. I'll do that first. That's the share screen. Yep. Okay. But, but then, so, and then it says share. So just hit that. Oh, okay. No, that's, but I don't want that one, right? <laughs> this is what. Killing me, John. I am. <laughs> it's just the order of which to do the thing. See, so now I see it, but you guys don't see it, right? Correct. So hit that share button again. Yeah. But now, so I get the screen, right? It says share, it says whiteboard, this or that. Do I have to hit this thing here? No. Landis is sharing. Oh. Landis, you're sharing your screen. Did you want to be? Back where we started. All right, John, try again. Okay, so my little share screen thing is gone now. Try moving your mouse. Some, it, it disappears if you're not active with your mouse. Yeah, it's kind of gone. Let me just see what happens. Let 
Oops. Here we go. Can you see it? No. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the progression of. Try just sharing your screen first instead of pulling up your file first. No, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, I know you're not going to believe me, but it went away. It's just hiding. It is. I don't know where it's hiding. <laughs> Are you in the Zoom meeting where you can see all of our- I can people? only see you. Oh. Oh. Okay, so go to the top right corner and there's a little view button and you can go to a grid view so you can see everybody. There's a little view button? Mm -hmm. within, within the Zoom meeting, in the top right corner, right underneath the... Oh, I got it. Okay. All right. Share screen? Yes. Okay, so now I got the thing, whiteboard, blah, 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 go down to my file down here? Or yep, go to the, <laughs> choose whichever the file that's up that you want to share. It doesn't have to be the one that you have open because you can always go find that one. So you see what happens though? You're not, I see it, but you don't see it. So the last time you told me to hit the little, this button. The little green share. Yeah. And then it might pull up a whole bunch of windows of documents that you have open. So you can hit share screen or window one if you have multiple. Oh, I see. It's up uh, to Screens you. open. Oof. Uh, it's just it's just finding how to get to the files onto the thing right well it's just like opening a normal a file that you would go and find and open uh when you need to go right but the only thing is my that little file thing is outside of the right it's outside of like the zoom box yes correct so you want me to go to that? That's outside of it? That's what keeps messing this up, I think. Right? And then I'm just opening this. Yeah, open the file that you want to share. There it is. <laughs> okay, now now go back to the Zoom meeting box and click share your screen. And then when all of those little windows pop up, find the one that says you know, monitor one or the like the whole. There you go. Hey, oh, you did it. Touchdown. <laughs> I think we should limit John to just one hearing <laughs> and, and a meeting. So get uh, I was, I was just about to get it up for him, but he did it. Go ahead, John. Okay. All go right. So this is the one that's across from um, from number seven. So this is down on the right. Um, again. Here's the wetlands off of sort of the end of the property here. Um, this is the lot line here. I, we had it kind of put in because it was hard to see. This is a detention basin that's on lot one, but you can see it's clearly just sort of uphill or, or uh, of the proposed building. And then the way this basin works is that the uh, once the this is full, then the water comes out and there's an outlet here down to the wetlands. But there's also, because we always have to put an emergency spillway right here, that we're showing the grading that brings this down to the wetlands here. But that only happens after a hundred year storm, so we don't really kind of worry too much about that. Um, Again, um, it's the same size house, 60 by 30. It has a 26, 30 garage here. Um, and again, we put a little berm here or a little curb to force or to make this water from the front of the garage go out into the street where it can go through the catch basin before it goes into the infiltration basin down here. 
Um, and this, all of this work, um, well, I think there's a place in here where you can see this wall is built to here, and then this wall will be extended to the rear here, the second wall here. So these walls are each four feet high or less. And then the rest of this is the front lawn here, lawn here, and lawn in the back. This in the back is in a drainage easement that um, either was or is conveyed to the town of Walpole. <clears throat> And, um, you know, that would just be grass, but those grades have to be, you know, um, established and maintained as they're shown on this plan. Um, and other than that, you know, it's pretty much the same as the, as the one across the street. Um, and all of the disturbed areas loamed and seeded. This is a walkout, so there's a little retaining wall here walk out in the back here, which means that the elevation of the ground at the rear is the same as the basement floor elevation, more or less, 219. Um, other than that, I guess I can answer any questions that you might have. There's no easement, there's no shell easement or anything on this side of the property. Ben Landis? Um, yeah, so, the rear of the house, you have this little swale or just grating to convey this, to convey any overflow from the basin. So whenever we design a basin, we're required under the stormwater management yeah. regulations to have a, an, an emergency spillway. Right. So yeah. the emergency spillway is set at the grade of a 100 year storm. So if we had a 101 year storm, theoretically, right, by calculation, then water would come out of here, storm water would come out of here. Anything less than that, 100 year storm or anything less stays in the basin and the storm water that comes out goes through the pipe here. So it, it's just something that's part of a design. And it's a little bit of overkill, but it's in okay. the regulation, so I can't ignore it. Yeah, I, I know the budding property owners were just concerned also. They didn't, you know, they wanted to make sure that no storm water was going to be discharged uh, in their direction. So. Yeah, it doesn't go in their direction. And actually, you can see we sort of make yeah. a little bit of a berm here. Yep. So, you know, they'll have a little berm that'll protect them. But there's no water, storm water going towards their house at all. And you can just see from the grades, right? So this right, yeah, everything runoff is always 90 degrees to the contour line. So it's actually coming from their property, you know, sort of onto this property down here. And is there um, supposed to be some riprap at the end of this outflow structure? The, the outflow of the um, basin? I'd have to look at the I'd have to look at the at the um, subdivision plan. It, we there can add be. it to this plan if you want, if it's not on the subdivision I mean, plan. It, it's an infiltration basin, so most, most of all, there's supposed to be going in the ground, but. Right, right, right. So even the, um, well, even the head wall here, I think, is probably set at the 100-year flood or pretty close to it. So I think what it is, is, you know, this is, this is sort of a, you know, maybe that kicks in like at a 50 year storm or something like that. But these soils here, when you on this side of, of the lot, you know, closer to the wetlands, believe it or not, these turn into sand and gravel soils. So we would expect the water basically to go into the ground. And, and just curious, so the, you have a split rail fence. Um, there's sort of two consecutive split rail fence, one at the top of the existing wall, and then another one at the proposed wall. You're talking here and here. This yes. And this. 
Well, these are two four foot walls, right? So here's sort of, you know, the elevation of the front yard when you're, you know, at the front door here, that's all kind of one elevation here. And then this drops down four feet. So, you know, again, it's, you know, sort of CYA. I don't, if I don't put this on here, I'm not really required to put that on there, but if I don't and somebody tumbles off over this, then, you know, somebody's gonna call me and ask me why, you know, some. No, I know, it just seems really awkward. I don't have, the person's not gonna be able to get around the side of their house there either. I don't, I don't know, it, there's just so much going on in this lot. If they don't put the fence up, it doesn't have any problem. I don't, you know have an issue with it, but I'm showing it on my plan because it's a safety issue, not not necessarily. No, I, I understand. I just it seems like one of those lots that they're just squishing on too too much with a, a lot of wetlands resources and no backyard and not not much of a backyard and stuff, but that's that's a design issue. That's that's all I have. Okay. Bailey? No comment. Doug? Uh, yeah, John, question. It looks from the drawing like uh, it says it's a, a is it a forced so, uh, town sewer system? Well, so you can't see it here, but um, so it's the first two lots are gravity and then there's a manhole. It's probably just off of the property here, uh, off of the drawing over here. And so um, this one and the one, maybe I should have brought it out across the street. So they'll have what's called an environment one grinder pump, right? So effluent comes in here and then it's pumped through an inch and a half force main to here. And then there's a common force main up to the, up to the uh, sewer here. So I would just say that's not that uncommon anymore. Um, all of Warren Lane off of um, off of North Street that I did. That's all forced just like this. Um, and other projects I've done, either new or um, in in often cases uh, proposed to fix a septic system, um, they're like that. So you know where I am, Doug. So at uh, there's two people, right? Um, two of my neighbors, um, the one right on Fisher Street at my driveway, they connect by a, to the sewer by a sewer pump, very similar to this. And then a couple of doors down, that guy came to me. Um, you know, if he put a septic system in, you know, in that part of Walpole, it's terrible. He'd have like a six foot mound in his backyard. So he connected he, his pipe runs up my driveway to the sewer manhole so it's, it's not that unusual and i think you're going to see more of this rather than less of this as we go forward uh, just just curious though if you know say one house loses power and the other house is pumping into that system is it are there check valves that prevent yeah, there's, a check, from going? there's a check valve in part of the uh, environment one Okay. So this is a sort of a self-contained unit. You know, you just buy this it's a fiberglass tank with the pumps in it and all of the controls. So that has a check valve. Okay. So it can't back up this way. And there's also, I mean, there'll be a curb stop here, um, but that has to be shut off by someone physically, kind of like a curb stop for a water system. Um, but that we shut off, that they shut off when they're gonna actually if they have to work on this pump, if they have to pull it out for some reason. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> Emilio. Um, uh, John, the the pipe that goes from the uh, the swale down to the wetlands is that uh, where does that end? I can't see; it's pretty small on my screen here. But this pipe here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh huh. Right there. Okay. Yeah, it ends here. Yeah. Okay, and that's. Yeah, so this is all, you know, I'm not telling you to, not to ask questions about it, but this, this is all approved, right? This was all right. part of the subdivision okay. part of the drainage. Yep. Um, but I, I think Landis is right. If we didn't, if we don't show 
riprap here on the subdivision plan, we should show it on this plan because it should have some riprap at the end here. Okay. All right. That's all I had. Okay, Betsy? Yeah, I guess I just have a, uh, some comments. It, 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 it looks like the sort of lot that's going to come back to us in about five years with a very earnest homeowner saying, where am I going to put the swing set? Where am I going to put the playhouse? Um, is, is there any chance, even though this or that has been approved, that the homeowner doesn't have to have riprap in their backyard and doesn't have to have a swale in their backyard and then have the side yard with two stone walls in it? It just seems, I, I, I know it's a design and I know it's, there were some approvals and the way it's done, but can anything be done to make this, any of this yard usable so that we don't have to make exceptions in five years? I, I, you know, it's hard to explain, but this really doesn't, it's just a little sort of dip down and back up in the yard. It doesn't make it unusable. It's just that I have to show it this way, Betsy, because again, I need to convey that, you know, any water that comes out of here has to go, you know, around the house, not into the house. So it's not really shown as very deep. It's probably, the, you know, in here is, you know, maybe a half a foot or even less lower than, than you know, sort of the contour lines that are indicating the swale. So I think when you see it, when it's finished, it doesn't look, it doesn't, it looks like anyone's yard, right? It's, it doesn't have, I mean, it is pitched from here to here, but that's the way the natural ground is, right? I'm not going to show this, you know, I'd have to show a wall to lift all of this up, but I don't think it's necessarily unusable. This area in here, right, is the same elevation as the basement floor. So these houses will not get water in their basement. So this, you know, the basement can be finished and then this would be, a, you know, not like this old house kind of guy, but, you know, this is a good space for people to use behind their house. Okay, thank you, John. Okay. Well, I'm just concerned about the swale in the back that uh, we have a condition that they can't uh, fill it in and level it off. That's all. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? Please identify yourself for the record. Okay. Uh, someone make a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, Alan Betsy. Okay. Uh, all in favor, Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Emilio? Aye. Uh, Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Uh, order conditions uh, with the notes that we spoke about. You'll show the uh, roof drainage, Coltec on the plan. Um, and whatever rip, else was on there. Rip wrap here. Rip wrap here. Right? And the rip wrap on the. Uh, good. Cleared in section number two. Right. Um, okay. Uh, anything else? So someone make a motion for the uh, order. So move. Second. Val and Betsy. Okay. All in favor. Bailey. Aye. Doug. Aye. Medio. Aye. Betsy. Aye. Al. Aye. Jack. Aye. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have one more hearing. We ready? Okay. Tona Wopal, Notice of the Dane Conservation Commission Public Hearing in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act. Tona Wopal Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Notice hereby given the intent of Eric Jonahan for the installation of an in ground pool, patio, and fencing at 3 Chopin Court. 
plans on file the Conservation Commission office. Public hearing above matter will be held at Walpole Town Hall or by a virtually accessible video on February 10th, 2021, beginning at 7.45 p.m. Contact El Hershey at walpolemass.gov or 508-660-7253 for Zoom information. All answers for the person requests to be present. Okay. Um, representing the applicant. Uh, Joyce Hastings from GLM Engineering. If I could share my screen. You can see my plan over here. <clears throat> so we're, uh, I'm representing the applicant at Three Shell Pond way, uh, way, and it's, we're proposing to install a pool. The reason we're filing is that we have a wetland off to the rear of the property over to the east side here that sets up our 25 foot and our 100 foot uh, buffer zone. And uh, we're proposing to put a pool it's kind of to the, to the rear of the house. The house faces Chopin Court here. And then the existing lawn right now ends, runs right through here. There's an existing stone wall. It's kind of a loose stone wall that sits here. And this is the area right here where we'll be uh, proposing the pool. There'll be a patio around the pool. They have a proposed cabana and a pool house here. They're gonna put a walkway. Uh, this activity here is outside the 100 foot buffer zone. This section is in the 100 foot buffer zone along with the grading. We have an erosion control barrier that uh, through the 100 foot buffer zone. And we have uh, stated that all exposed soils behind the pool will be stabilized with uh, hydro sea with aquifer on this slope here. And any pool water will be desalinated or dechlorinated prior to draining the pool. Um, project access will come from the driveway through this area here. They'll do their work and they'll finish up and uh, come back out. There'll be no stockpiling in the 100 foot buffer zone. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Landis? Um, I think Joyce pretty much covered everything. I, I wanted to make sure that the slope was stabilized and um, she addressed the pool. We can add our special condition for the pool. Um, the, the lighter green areas that indicates lawn, so the, there's grass. Is that correct, Joyce? So this area here, uh, back here, is uh, it's not grass it's it's more it's a more of a rough area <laughs> this is more maintained the maintained area is up through here so the maintained okay. lawn now will be the stabilized slope which they won't mow but they're going to uh they'll probably clear it a couple times a season um and this area here is just kind of this area behind the silk fence is just a rough area Rough as in not maintained lawn. Looks like at one point it was cleared and then it, just yeah. scrubby stuff grew back. And they didn't you know, do anything just... with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it, Jack. Okay. Uh, Bailey? No questions. Uh, Doug? Yeah, the uh, same order of conditions of the, the pool water to be desalinated or dechlorinated prior to drawing down. Would that also, wouldn't, shouldn't that also apply to the proposed hot tub water? It's, it can, certainly. The hot tub is outside the 100 foot buffer zone, but no water should go into the 100 foot buffer zone. But where, where does the hot tub get drained to, though? Uh, uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't need to be drained. They're gonna, they're gonna do what they have to do as far as clearing it goes. But, uh, but the exact same condition should be applied to the hot tub, you're correct. Yeah, okay, that's it, thank you. Okay, uh, Medio.
Nope, no comments. <laughs> okay, Betsy. No comment. Well, I don't see any uh, uh, plaques uh, anywhere. Uh, no, we only have this one, which I believe came from the the plan next door. So uh, we would add two additional ones here and there. I revised the plan to show that. That you'll add two more? Was I'll that... add two more. Okay. Anything else, Al? Well, no, no, not really. It looks pretty good. Okay. Anyone in the audience have any questions or comment? Please identify yourself for the record. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, someone make a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Sal and Betsy, okay. All in favor? Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Order conditions with uh, um, conditions as noted. Anything else to add to that? You're set, Landis? Yeah, I think we're set. So we'll, we'll put our standard order for pool and you're going to add plaques. I was just looking. Yeah, I think it was 28 Beethoven that came in for an order of conditions that that's what the plaque must have been for. But okay. Okay, someone moved that the order of conditions. So moved. Second. Alan Betsy. Good. All in favor? Uh, Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Now, let's see. What else do we have on here? We had... Uh... So, Jack, we, we did, as I e emailed you, we were supposed to put on um, 12 Bubbling Brook as it continued order of con uh, continue hearing from the last hearing. Um, but we we continued at the hearing, but we we didn't put it on the agenda. So it's it's in my report. And um, I was discussing with John Glosser some some changes. So I thought he could just discuss the changes tonight. And then you could hold up hold it over for the next meeting, we'll continue it again for the actual vote. Anything that we need to discuss that we wouldn't do at our next uh, hearing? Well, e either John can go over the changes that he was planning on making to the plan tonight to see if it's amendable to the commission or he can wait till next hearing. You know, I'm just suggesting to move it forward. We can just have a discussion with the commission tonight of the changes he's proposing. He doesn't have to share the screen again, does he? <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. Oh no! <laughs> Let me take a nap. I guess. <laughs> we can remember it. We can remember they were on their neighbor's property. So yeah. Do you want to remember? So we're gonna. So I did add a note to the plan. Do you want to see the plan or no? I did add a note to the plan that um, that um, so Scott, who I think might be on the call now, did send me an email. He did agree. Um, back when we originally showed him the plan, uh, he talked to his neighbor and they did agree that Scott will take that fence down, even though as Landis and I said, we can put it on the plan. I'm not so sure you can make it a condition because it's someone else's property, but it's going to come down. And then behind the pool in the pool house, right to the rear, um, there's wetlands on the other side of the existing fence that fence will be abandoned and there'll be a new fence placed at the 25 foot no disturb. So at the rear, um, there'll be a 25 foot no disturb. On the right side, um, the fence is gonna remain as it was originally shown um, to you, except it'll extend back to the 25 foot no disturb. Um, Landis and I did find, and Landis can confirm if I'm not speaking correctly, but 
when they built this house, there was no notice of intent applied for and there was no order conditions issued. And when, uh, actually I did the plan, when the previous owner added on to the back of this house, we did show the wetlands very similar to the way they're shown on the current plan. But because that area was already uh, kind of an, uh, an extensive deck and the addition was just where the deck was, um, the commission issued a, uh, and it was, there was no work within 25 feet of wetlands. So the commission issued a negative order, a negative determination of applicability for that work. So the, the question about was there a 10 foot um, buffer or no disturb area when the house was built or when the house was added onto is, is no, there wasn't. So I think that the area was sort of built upon and, and uh, occupied um, without the benefit of any um, no disturb area. But all of the work except for the wetlands that are to the right side, all of the work or the proposed um, uh, finished product where the fences will be, will be either at or uh, away from the 25 foot no disturb. So, so that's, that's what we, you know, would, you know, propose to the commission that what the owner would, would like to have approved. Um, so, well, A, all of the work is within an existing lawn area, and then B, he's uh, pulling back from the wetlands on the rear and on the left side, so that there'd be no work going forward. There'll be no work as part of this project and no work going forward on the left side of the property and at the rear of the property within 25 feet. And then, the, and then that area will be allowed to sort of restore itself to its natural condition. Okay. Landis, you have anything else to add? Um, no, not, not anything different. Um, you know, I, I will concur with John that um, he looked at the uh, health department plans to see if there was anything uh, regarding the sewer. And I looked also in, in the subdivision plan as well as past order of conditions. And there was no order of conditions to build the house. Um, there, the wetlands behind the house weren't, was not shown on the subdivision plan either. The request for determination for the porch was just a request for determination. So there was no, no alteration bounds or area determined at that point either. Um, so I think to put, to pull the fence off of the, well, the, to pull the work away from the other person's property and put the fence and bounds along the property line um, is, a, is a good solution as well as to the rear of the property, which is also part of the 25 foot no alteration area and just limit it to the person's property. Okay. okay. Um, I would just suggest that you uh, have your same comments. So the next time we have the meeting, we are, we have these comments in front of us again to review this. So anybody else have any questions? Bailey? No questions. Okay, Doug? No questions. Medio? No, I'm okay with that. Good, Betsy? No comment. Al? I think what he's proposing uh, is what we discussed uh, last week, so it uh, keeps me happy. Okay, and I made my comment just land us to continue that verbiage on your next report when we have yep. this. So we'll, make, we'll have this. Um, actually, we need to make a motion to put this on the um, February 24th. February 24th hearing at what time? If we could put it at 7.50. So we have the stormwater and erosion control regulations at seven. We have a hearing at 7.45. And then if we could do it at 7.50. 7.50. Yep. 
Someone make that a motion. So move. Second. Sound. Betsy, all in favor. Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Pack aye. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Landis. Okay. Don't forget to awesome. thank Bailey. Thanks, Bailey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I owe you big time, <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Bye, John. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, um, Bailey. All right, what do we got next? Okay, so we have, um, we do have Lou Petrosi here from Wall Street Development to address the issues at Boyd in the States. Okay, Landis, you want to fill us in on what, uh, why Mr. Petrosi is here? Um, sure. So it, it was a while ago when we had the, big snowstorm, I went out there to take a look at the site and noticed that there was um, quite a bit of water in the little wetlands in front of lot six, and that there was evidence that it had overtopped the wetlands and um, gone down the slope on lot five. So there was a little um, erosion that it was occurring where the water had overtopped and flowed down the slope. Um, I, I did bring this to the attention of Lou Petrosi and asked him to address why this was occurring because the, you know, the, the stormwater report and calculations and plans for the subdivision certainly didn't call for that wetlands to overtop and discharge water onto the adjacent lot. Um, so I, I, you know, brought it to the attention of the commission and wanted Mr. Petrosi to explain to the commission why that was happening and how he was addressing it. Hey, Mr. Petrosi. Hey, what's happening tonight? How are you? We're good. You want to fill us in on what's uh, what you've done there and what's going on? Well, well, I don't know what why it, it has to be um, why it's a immediate conclusion that it's a non-compliance. Well, we built the we built everything according to the plan. And according to the, um, the notice of intent plan for lot six. So from my uh, understanding, and I've been out there several times during some heavy, heavy rainstorms, the last one being on Christmas Day, um, there seems to be uh, more flow through the culvert from the other side of the wetlands than previously contemplated, I guess. So what's happened is the ground is frozen or could be frozen. And so the water is flowing through and we have a retaining wall that was built to maintain the 25 foot buffer zone around that wetland. And so the water is pooling in that area. And then if we get an extended rainfall, um, there, it is overtopping on the left side of the house. And Landis is correct that, you know, that overtopping is causing erosion on the, um, on the side slope. So we, um, we installed some erosion control to um, mitigate the flow and to also try and prevent further erosion from occurring. But I think uh, the long, two, there's two possible solutions. One is to regrade the area of the left side of lot six so that it's a more higher mounded area around that area of the wetland or the pooling area where it was overtopping, which we anticipate doing in the spring. Um, but the other thing is that, and I don't know how the commission would feel about this, but seems to me that there should be some sort of a uh, control, flow control on the um, southerly side of that culvert to slow down the flow underneath and into lot six. Um, we, I tested it out with a couple of hay bales and during the last two rainstorms that we had subsequent to Christmas day, uh, it seemed to work pretty good. 
So those are there's nothing going to happen between now and uh, June probably until it dries out. But there does need to be some regrading and um, maybe rechanneling along that side of lot six. But I think long term we sh should think about some sort of a control structure to um, slow the flow down on that side of the culvert. That's okay. really my that's my assessment. But well, we did build everything according to the plan. The culvert's in the right place, the right elevation. And the wall that we built is a uh, similar height to what was proposed. And I don't think anybody anticipated that we would get this kind of uh, flow or that it would accumulate to this, to the amount that it accumulated. I mean, it did get, you know, a foot and a half, two feet deep, I think, at its highest. But then it was outletting, so it wasn't going any higher than that. Yeah, have you had your uh, engineer review um, either their um, stormwater calculations to see uh, if, why this wasn't anticipated before or what suggestions they have to make in addition or along with what you were suggesting to uh, try to reduce the flow going through that culvert? Well, you know, I have brought it up to uh, GLM and uh, he did obviously agree with my regrading of the yard area to sort of uh, prevent it from overtopping. But I think he would agree with, uh, you know, we've talked about it and I think he would agree with me that some sort of uh, control or on that side would, would certainly um, prevent it from happening in the future. If, if you if you reduce the flow rate going under the culvert or through the culvert, what happens on the upstream side? Well, it didn't seem to affect it at, at all because this is such a wider area of, uh, I think Rob told me that it just goes out the other end and ends up in the same spot. So that- I don't, I don't that follow wet, that. So what, that wetland goes around the property and uh, around lot four, I mean, a lot three and lot four, and it goes around those lots. It ends up in the same spot where the brook is down at the end. I forget the name of the street that it's on, but it just goes out that way instead of across lot six, that's all. Jack, are we gonna go around with comments or? Yeah, we yeah. Just I just wanted to uh, ask Mr. Petrosi uh, what, they may have been done on there. Landis, do you have anything more you want to say right now? Um, so you're, you're I, I think before you had indicated in an email to me that you thought perhaps that some of the flow was coming from the street or the sidewalk. So when I was up there, there did look like there was perhaps some sediments in the driveway that looked like flow was coming in that direction. That, that's correct. I mean, again, I think there needs to be some regrading there. I, I do think that's a contributing aspect to that because I thought that the way the sidewalk and the driveway come together near the edge of the wetland, that that could be uh, contributing to the flow. But I think the, when I was out there Christmas Day, uh, I don't know if you guys recall, but Christmas Day we had a torrential, torrential rainstorm. And I was there for you know, opening my presence. I didn't get yours, Landis, but I was out there opening my presence. And um, it just seemed that there was a tr tremendous amount of flow uh, going through the culvert that probably was, I'd say, 80% of, of uh, the water that was in there. So, um, but that does have, you know, we're going to address the regrading. I had them put the, uh, silt sock on top of the wall instead of below the wall where it was originally and I put some uh, erosion control along the edge of the driveways on that side. Um, so like I said we I put a couple of hay bales in front of the culvert in the last since since uh, I put them there on Christmas day and we haven't had any problems there since. 
and we've had a couple of rainstorms um, since that time. And I guess it's just a trial and error, but I mean, that, that seems to me to be the, the better solution to, to prevent that from occurring. Got anything else, Landis? Well, no, I, I, I think Mr. Petrosi has to catch the water that stopped the water from coming from the sidewalk on the street down into that wetlands, because I don't, that wasn't part of the design, or if it was, it, it wasn't shown that way. So one, you have to put something in place so the water doesn't come from the street into the wetlands because that's not the path. Well, it's not going into the wetlands. There's a little erosion that's happening there, but which will be cleaned up. But um, well, there's clear. I think there's clearly indications that water is coming off the street across the driveway and down the slope into the wetlands. Well, when you're out there, it doesn't. It's like an incremental. Okay, well, so I think that needs to be addressed. I, I don't know if it's just Lou that's frozen or if it's anybody. Lou, I don't know if he can hear us. Mm. It's gone. Well. Lou. I think it would be good maybe if um, he, he needs to talk to his engineer and we go out there and take a look at the site and come up with some solutions because there's clearly something going on there that is not part of the plans or if it's part of the plans, it wasn't correctly shown to the commission. Lou, are you back with us? Well, whether or not he's back with us, I mean, he can always look at this after Okay. I mean, I think we should go around and make comments yeah. and make it and, and have some sort yeah, of it'd be better if he hears what's going on. I don't know where he uh, he might be trying to log in again. Give him a, give, give him a minute. Okay, while well, we're waiting for him to come back, is there any other on these uh, enforcement orders that is anything different, anything new? Landis? Um, no. No. Good. Right. Well, let's see what he's if he comes back. Was there Maybe something we were going to do about trails? Yeah, well, we want to we want to wait for wait another couple of minutes or yeah. Well, to... let's do, let's talk about trails while we're waiting. I, he might in, in case he doesn't come back. We need to to make some comments. He can get them. Okay. All right. Um, the. Uh, as you know, the Conservation Commission purchased that eight acres of Pierce property that abuts the existing Adams Farm property. There is a trail on that property that goes, uh, a well-established trail that goes kind of westerly on the property and ends at a gate and a uh, no trespassing signs on private property. If you go Along the par parallel to the power line, there's another trail that is not quite as developed, but there is a trail that goes through there and actually goes across the wetland and connects up to the red trail um, at the top of the hill on the power line. So the um, Friends of Adams Farm took a look at this, and I don't know if you've all familiar with the um, bridges that were built on uh, the Blue Trail on Adams Farm. That is, uh, uh, as you go in the loop coming back, 
Uh, it's a four foot wide bridge with a railing or something similar to that um, has been proposed. And we've got, let me find the right paperwork here. There's a, trying to find the total distance here. Oh, about 175 feet of wetlands to be crossed. Um, that wetland crosses the northern end of the pierced property with a stream. Right now there's a, there's a, 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 a plank across the stream and the rest of it, there's, there's not much there other than it's wet and can get wetter. So we'd like to make a, uh, Friends of Adams Farm has proposed making a bog bridge to cover this area, 174 feet, or about 175 feet, a bridge would be probably um, 30 inches wide and would cover that whole section of 175 feet with um, using a uh, concrete blocks for the base and then um, uh, all pressure treated lumber on the base to make a, uh, a frame and then cover the frame with the plastic treks, which is a similar material to what's on the existing bridge on the blue trail. So the cost, estimated costs for this would be using uh, 30 inch wide planks would be about $4,500 plus or minus. Uh, the Adams Farm Committee has voted to contribute to the cost of this. Koopman Lumber, which uh, has also donated other material, I think they donated to the cost to the bridge that was put over uh, from Jarvis Farm across the uh, wetland to connect to the town forest. They have indicated that they would be willing to contribute some of the cost of the material. Um, the Friends of Adams Farm uh, would also contribute towards the purchase of the material. And I'm asking that the Conservation Commission, since it is on conservation land, that we contribute $1,000 towards the cost of this um, bridge through that wet area. So anybody have any questions that roughly, do you know where I'm talking about? It's up parallels the pipe, the, the, the uh, power line. And if you come down to the blue, down the blue trail, the gravel road to the end of the road to the field, you take a left through the gate, you go out to the power line and that's roughly where the Pierce property, the eight acres we just purchased begins. Um, so anybody have any questions? Bailey? No questions. Okay. Um, Doug? Uh, just, just one simple question. You, you refer to it as a bridge, but it sounds like it's just a walkway uh, uh, on top of boggy soil. Yeah, we've been calling them a bog bridge, but yeah, that's it. It's a, it's a, like a walkway, right? By, yeah, a walkway. It's a yeah. two by two by eights or two by tens, with a framework to uh, stabilize them, and then put the treks down as a yeah. platform for the for a walkway. Yeah, that that's my only question. Medium. So will that be a lot like the one at Jarvis Farm? You said. Um, similar. That's a four foot wide, I believe. Okay. So this would be. Probably, um, we talked about either 24 or 30 inch. The cost isn't that much difference if, if any to make it a 30 inch wide because you're re actually reducing the waste on, uh, on the, uh, the treks. I think they come in 16 foot sections. So um, making it 30 or 32 inches wide reduces the waste and you cost the same. Okay. So, no, I, I agree with uh, contributing $1,000 to that, and uh, sounds good. Let's see. I agree with that project and contributing $1,000. Okay, Al? I have a question. 
Are you proposing that we do this with no filing of any kind, that we're going to be constructing something in the wetland and, and uh, not filing? Uh, whereas if somebody else wanted to do it, would require them to file. Landis already has a filing put together, don't you, Landis? Working on it, but yes, Jack and I, <laughs> Jack and I did talk about a filing. So Al, okay. a, a, absolutely, they did a filing for Jarvis Farm. Won't be quite as extensive because they don't have to, you know, drill into uh, wetlands and go over a stream. But yes, there there will be a filing. I, I think it's a great idea, and the more we can uh, do like that, the better. But uh, I just want to make sure that somebody doesn't come back and find us that we did something uh, illegal. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm all for spending some of our money and uh, I think that's a good place to do it. Okay, I think the way this fund is set up that all it needs is approval from the Conservation Commission. I don't think it requires approval from any other board. Is that correct, Landis? Yeah, it's your money. Okay. I don't see why. No, it's your. Here's the I'd like, I'd make make the motion that we spend a thousand dollars from the conservation fund to apply towards the purchase of materials for uh, this project on the uh, conservation property. And I'll Street. second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, quick question: uh, How much is left in that fund? Uh, my guess is it's around a. a over a hundred thousand. It's over a hundred now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So we can we can yeah. we can make a a small dent in that for this project. Okay. Um. All in favor? Bailey. Aye. Uh, uh, Doug. Aye. Emilio. Aye. Betsy. Aye. Al. Aye. Jack. Aye. Okay. Thank you. I will advise the uh, other parties involved that uh, this has been approved and that uh, that will require a filing. So there's going to be some time involved before any work can start, but it's probably going to be, be a while before anything's done anyhow. Um, but I would expect it to be at least a start this spring. So, okay. You Thank me. you. You miss me, Jack? Oh, yes. Lou, did you vote for us? Are you going to contribute some money towards our bridge project? Oh, my God. Just just write out a blank check. No problem. Things are good these days. You know, busy. Okay. Um, all right. You're back with us. Thank any, you. Do you need me for anything else? Or? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know where, um, when we left off, um, you we guys were, were concerned. All, you guys were all smiling. You know, we were concerned with the um, water coming off the street into that and that uh, something needs to be done about that. We're going to run through the commission now and see if anybody else has any other comments that wanted you to hear them. So go ahead. Uh, Bailey, anything else? Uh, no comments at this time. Thank okay. you. Uh, Doug? No comments. Medio? There we go. Media will have to come back to a medium. Um, Betsy. Yeah, it, it, it just feels too vague and, and, and too trial and error. You, you use that term trial and error, Lou. And I just think that if the stormwater um, controls are not working, then we need to see or hear from the engineer that put it together and see what that engineer's plan is I don't think it should be done piecemeal and trial and error and, and and I don't think it should go all the way out to June either um and and so far you've been putting up hay bales and and, er and erosion controls but that's just temporary measures it just seems like as though this has to be revisited by GLM who designed it and put it in place something's not working and and we need to see something official about it and not just sort of speculating about what it could be or might not be. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you, uh, I, I just want you to know, Betsy, that everything has been built according to the design. So 
Um, I don't want you to think that um, GLM designed something and we installed it impro improperly and that's causing the problem. That's not what's causing the problem. The problem is caused by a, um, excessive rainstorms that come down when you have, um, you know, these torrential downpours where the water flow is more than what um, is expected, I guess you'd call it. But it's not, it's not necessarily trial and error because it's, uh, if you slow the flow down, it's going to slow the water from getting to the other side of the street. It's a pretty simple. But we just had a project on Echo Lane or Echo, whatever it was there, where, where if they had a hundred year storm, there was going to be a swale through a backyard to make absolutely sure, we hope, that that the water goes where it needs to go. So something's not working. Um, no, in, no, in no, we, well, I, I, I don't know necessarily that I could explain it to you uh, tonight, but I don't think it really matters. You know, it, the situation is that there's water coming off the street down the driveway, down the slope into the wetlands, and that's not supposed to happen. That's causing erosion, and then it's causing the wetlands to fill up more than anticipated and uh, overflowing onto the adjacent lot, causing erosion. So that that situation needs to be fixed. So you <laughs> there was there was the commission did have a reservation about the house being built so close to that wetlands and asked several questions you know in regard to that wetlands how much water does that wetlands receive and um, it seems well, to be receiving more than it can take at the moment so that needs to be fixed. Well, the the, the, the subdivision has been built for since 2017. It doesn't and matter if there's a problem and there's a there's a problem and there's a violation at the moment that needs to be addressed. Well, okay. All right. Before we go on, Emilio, did you have any question? No, I well, I, I would agree with uh, Betsy and Landis that it's not working and the engineer needs to reevaluate re that whole design and figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. Okay. Al, Al any comments? Yeah. Lou has to get his engineer on board to solve the problem. And uh, when he's got some kind of a sensible proposal, we'll listen. I think that's okay. uh, what has to happen. So I think that's the most sensible thing I've heard all night. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, all right, anything else, Al? No, get, okay. get Betsy, Rob you... out there to solve the problem. Okay. okay so Anything else, Betsy? No, I, I agree with Al. There needs to be a sensible proposal from the engineer, but there needs to be a deadline for it because we're heading into spring. We're getting, we're getting there. Okay, Mr. Petrosi. Yes, sir. You're with us. Okay. When can you get back to us with your engineer with uh, what you're going to do to resolve this problem? Uh, well. I'll yeah. talk to him tomorrow. I would say in the next two weeks, maybe we could probably put something together for you and review the calculations. Okay. Our next um, meeting is February 24th. So we can I put you on that agenda already. Thank you. Then uh, Chairman, can I suggest yeah. if in the meantime, there's an, another event where there is um, stormwater flowing off the street and not into the catch basin, not into the stormwater management system down to the driveway into the wetlands and over topping on the other side that um, the commission fine, Mr. Petrosi. Listen, it's gonna, gonna take him two weeks to do any kind of um, we're not gonna this get, point. We're not gonna get into any fining at this point because Chairman, I built that it. was a suggestion to, to you and the commission. Right. Well, let me just this say, has been going please. on for a while. He knows it's been going on for a while and <laughs> it doesn't I'm not sure if the house, is, the house has only been built for less than a year and we only had this problems um, arise in the last uh, since November. So I don't understand where you think that you can start finding me for something that is uh, um, according to plan. Okay. If there's <laughs> a violation that continues, if, if there's a violation that continues, you'll be subject to a fine. So it would be a, it would be in your best interest to make sure that there is no water coming off the street 
that the street water is going through the drainage system it's supposed to go through. Okay. Oh. Okay. Did is that we've lost your you're muted. Well, you're muted, Lou. Trying to unmute him. Lou, we can't hear you. Can you unmute him, Landis? I'm, un I'm unmuted. There you go. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Did you have said anything more you wanted to say? <laughs> if you go out to the uh, site, you'll notice that the driveway, the, the apron of the driveway is a good six inches or eight inches above the roadway. So there is no drainage that's coming from the roadway down the driveway into the wetlands, okay? Anybody who would say that is clearly doesn't know what they're talking about. So there is, as I said, there's, there's a slight grade, grade regrading that has to take place to allow that, whatever that area is that might be tilted towards that wetland to be regraded in a different direction. But Landis is incorrect when she says that the water from the street <laughs> is, bypassing the catch basins and draining onto this property. That is not what's happening, please. Okay, so can you enlighten us, Lou, is because I, I, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm misinterpreting your email and I did also observe sediments on, on the driveway that looked like they were, had come, were flowing down towards the wetlands. You, you, are, you are correct, but that water is not coming from the street. Okay, fine. Coming. All right, so not the street, but from from the some other entity that we don't you have, understand. You have a driveway that's an impervious surface. It's on a hill. The driveway is sloped down the hill, and, the, and there is water that will slide across the driveway towards the wetlands needs to be regraded. It's not like uh, we're not talking about a huge amount of, of runoff here. Now, if it were the street, I'd be the first to admit that the water is coming off of the street. And that was, but that's not what's happening with the street and the sidewalk. The sidewalk and the driveway apron are a good six inches above the roadway surface. There's no, there's no water that's coming from the roadway into the driveway and into the wetlands. Lou, uh, is your roadway drainage system functional now? It no. was. So, so, you know, we put granite curbing in, and so we, at the town engineer's request, and at that time, we, you know, we had all kinds of erosion control around each of the catch basins to catch the water, and silt sacks are installed, and so on. But at the request of the town engineer, when we put the curbing in, we purposely left at his request an inch, you know, you pour the concrete and it was an inch below the surface of the binder. So the concrete and the binder are not at the same level. So what's happening is, is that the water is in the gutter where it should be, but it's bypassing the catch basins, if that makes any sense to you. So we put some erosion control or some stop gaps around each of the catch basins to keep the water from going there. And of course, as soon as it snowed, the plows ripped them all out. And you know now we've had two or three storms since then. So uh, right now the water is flowing down towards the cul-de-sac just the way it's supposed to. And it's some of it's going into the catch basin, but if we get a tremendous rainstorm again, it's sort of overtopping the curb and just swaling down towards the detention basin. Okay, if I if I may, I would reviewed your email. So your email said water from the driveway and the sidewalks. From the driveway and the sidewalk, right? Okay, not the street. All right. Not the street. Sorry, my mistake. Not okay. the street. So I I I don't think that that's correct. That it should be going from the sidewalk or the driveway into the wetlands. So that needs to be fixed. And also, I you know. Perhaps that little wetlands held more water as an isolated land subject flooding than was um, shown yeah. on the original subdivision plan. It, it could be. I, I don't know. I, I'm not the guy who designed it. I'm just the guy who's building it. <laughs> well, the, it, it's it's on you though, so it of needs to be corrected. It 
Everything. Lou would also, I don't think that storm at, uh, in December that we had uh, was, I don't know what the equivalent was, but I, I'm, it was not a hundred year storm. Oh no, it wasn't a hundred year storm. And this is same. what is supposed to design. I think you need to remind your engineer and uh, so he needs to review his calculations. When you get back to us on the 28th, uh, that uh, he 24th. can address that issue. Yes, I will, okay. I will speak with him tomorrow and I'll okay. convey, convey everybody's remarks. Okay, so you'll be back on February 28th with uh, GLM. Is it, is it the 28th or the 24th? 24th. Sorry, 24th. Yes, 24th. So and, GLM Engineering is going to come back on the 24th as well. Well, I hope so. I, 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 I hope so. We would, we would expect that your engineer would be here so he can address the engineering aspects of this issue. And if there are any wetland identification issues that, that kind of get, uh, or that, uh, have contributed to this issue that uh, they would also address that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. By the way, what the idea did you continue the uh, RDA on the pinnacle? Uh, you asked for that? thirty days, so we made yeah. that March tenth, uh, I believe, is the date. Okay. That's you know, fine. The time. Um, I don't know what time we continued it, but you'll have to find no out. No problem. Yeah, that, no problem. I'm just trying to get prepared. That's all. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry about the uh, computer glitch, but I had no idea what that happened either. So I'm just a, okay. I'm a real estate developer. I'm not a technical guy. We, we wouldn't have known that. Thank you for coming on tonight. All right. See you later. Thank you. Okay. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Um, what else do we have? Do we have anything else then on the agenda? I don't see anything else. I think that's it, Jack. Okay. Um, oh, we have a request or we got a quote from Beta. Um, this was to the review, the revision. Of, by the way, did we get anything from uh, Summer Street that they said they'd have for by February 10th? We got um, we got a letter from uh, Oxbow Brian Butler in regards to the fence. But we don't have, uh, we haven't gotten the stormwater report yet? We haven't gotten the stormwater report. Okay. Uh, but we did get revised plans. Is that correct? Yes, we, we got the revised plans. Um, so we, 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 we got the 93 sheets, which I then went over and told them we needed just the sheets that applied to the Wetlands Protection Act and not everything that was applying to the ZBA 40B um, permits. And they sent plans that were, that they pulled from the, the role. This quote from Beta is for, what was it? Uh, two, two portions to the quote. One is for $1,750 to review uh, the scope, I think the latest kid, I don't know if you can follow. And uh, the second portion is $500 to assist in the uh, writing and order of conditions. When we separate these two right now, that uh, I would suggest that we consider the $500 fee to assist in writing the order of conditions from beta. Um, someone want to, uh, let's, any, any questions on this? 
Uh, Bailey? No questions. Doug? No questions. Medium? No, no comments. Betsy? Nope, no comment. Al? I'm all for giving uh, Landis any help she needs. Okay, so all in favor? Um, I'm in favor of this also. All in favor um, for $500. This would be paid for by the commission, uh, probably out of the wetlands filing fee account uh, for beta to assist in the order of conditions. So uh, someone make that a motion. I'll move it. Second. Down. Betsy, all in favor. Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack, aye. Okay, so that's covered. Al, can you explain a little better, Landis, as to what the other portion of this quote from Beta uh, in, includes? This was $1,750. Sure. So, so all, all along, I, I believe the commission has say has been saying that once they got um, the revised plans, that our peer reviewer would review them for consist consistency with the Wetlands Protection Act, as well as the um, report that Beta had provided the, the commission from the peer review. So it would be that it would be reviewing the plans to um, make sure that everything that was agreed upon to be changed was changed um, and that it's consistent with the with the wetlands protection act and regulations typically you stated in your letter that it does not include stormwater management design peer review um, right because i didn't include that because we didn't have um what, what we had done the first time would be we had received the report from touch attack and they reviewed that that report and then came up with anything addition that they felt should be reviewed based on the wetlands protection act and regulations um, we don't have a touch attack report yet um, so i didn't include it in the in the in the proposal so, so I this know how has been Right, so I don't know how, how, you, how the commission wants to handle that is just once the touch tech reviews the stormwater management for the um, Zoning Board of Appeals and issues their report that we review that report and be satisfied with it or come up with suggestions. All right, so that's still uh, still on the, on the table. We're waiting for their report, which they said that we'd have by uh, February 10th, which we don't have yet. Right, so, and I don't, I don't know how they, they can't exactly say when a, when a peer review or a consultant is going to be done with their review. So, it makes sense. It's so, not here yet. Um, but I, you know, the commission should not close their hearing or issue a decision or anything until it's satisfied, um, either from Tetra Tech or Beta that the stormwater management system um, complies with the Wetlands Protection Act. Right. So we need to pursue this now. What we would do is ask the applicant to pay this $1,750. Um, they may not agree with that. If they don't, then we would be, uh, again, uh, in a situation where we could pay for that out of the wetlands filing fee account. I think it's a, whether we pay for it or the applicant does, I think it's a worthwhile approach to review, to make sure that uh, everything that's supposed to be done is being done on this project. Um, so if we have any questions about, um, about either of, either asking the applicant to fund it or funding it ourselves. Um, anybody have any questions? Bailey? Uh, yes, so this isn't a requirement, but it's something that uh, we've almost determined as a best practice to do these peer reviews. Landis, you want to address well, that? 
yes, sometimes with very large projects, um, it's just helpful to have a consultant reviewing them rather than than me. Part of part of that is the with everything else that is going on and has been going on with the commission that we need uh, peer review. It's also allowed under the Wetlands Protection Act that on large projects that the commission can request the peer review, and it's common practice that we have done that. Okay. Anything else? No, I was just trying to understand if this was something that we are requesting as a commission of the applicant versus it being something that is almost automatically done. So that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, Doug? Uh, no comment. Medio? Uh, yeah, I agree with the peer review, so I'm, I'm all for that. That's it? No comment. Al? I'm all for it. Okay, um, I, I'm not sure, I know the applicant is probably not going to volunteer to pay for it. I don't know under the Wetlands Protection Act with a peer review situation if we can demand that they pay it or uh, they can refuse and then, uh, but I think we should, if they don't pay for it, that, uh, it, that the commission do it out of our uh, wetland filing fee fund. Landis, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, I, I think you certainly can say to the applicant that the plans need to be reviewed. And if they don't, then, you know, you can, you can say there's insufficient information because we weren't able to re review the plans as we would like to. But I think at this point, since they paid for the first peer review and they did pay something uh, in a tune of $26,000 in permitting fees for the project that um, for the commission to use those fees to do the final review would not be, you know, would be okay. Okay. So, um, so I want to make that a motion then to cover this cost. I'll make the motion. Wait, can just clarify what we're doing, Jack. So, you this is this is to this is a vote for uh, having beta peer review the last revision that the applicant has made with uh, this for one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Except the way you phrased it was that we were we were voting whether we were going to cover the costs. I I, I think we're we're going with your strategy of first we ask. Or, or are we just going straight to covering the costs? I just wanted to clarify that because we didn't. Um, either way, well, my motion was if we ask the applicant to pay, if they don't, then if we would, the commission would pay for it out of the wetlands okay. filing fee. Okay, second. Yes. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor, Bailey? Aye. Doug? Aye. Medio? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Al? Aye. Jack, I. Okay, so that's covered. Um, do you want to? Uh, we can send a, uh, an email to the applicant that we have voted to accept Beta's quote on this. On that, are they willing to pay or contribute towards paying the? Uh, that one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, and just ask them what get to see, so we can they can have the opportunity to pay if they want to. If they decide it's in their interest. Okay. Okay. I'm guessing what that answer is going to be. <laughs> I'll take care uh, of it. Okay. Um, so what did I have anything else here? You know, we've been uh, discussing a lot of things that are not on the agenda. I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, I don't know. Was that on the report? It wasn't. You're right, Al. The, the we didn't we we talked about the beta. Um, 
the beta consultant quote, and that was not on the agenda. The uh, bubbling brook, it was in my report, so we discussed it because my report is on the agenda. Well, I haven't seen your report. Yeah, I'm sorry because I I I did it very late because I was at a um, UNH class today, so I I wasn't able okay. to get. <laughs> Right. Uh, we'll, there was one other thing that we have also discussed in the past, I would consider this part of probably uh, uh, past old business. Um, and I'll just mention that Landis got a email, an email from town council that the Aggie school project for their uh, uh, solar fields is subject to the town bylaws. So just uh, for everybody's information. Yeah, I saw that email, yeah. I sent okay. that to everyone, John. Oh, okay, good. And I don't know what just happened here. Well, Landis, I have, a, I have a question, Landis. Um, on your a conservation agent report, after the first paragraph, it says minutes from 1-13-2021. Is that a, a, an error? Um, no, I was just including the minutes from the previous hearing on the pinnacle point for that oh, for that okay. hearing, just because it stated in there the information that was supposed to be submitted to us and it, it never was submitted to us. So I, I just wanted oh, it gotcha. clarified. But okay. then we decided to continue it. Oh, okay. And it was a little awkward. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else? Um I don't know, were we on the uh, uh, municipal television tonight? Yes. Oh, okay. We didn't do. All right. So if nobody has anything else, um, our next meeting is uh, February 24th. So someone make a motion to close the hearing. I'll move that. Okay. That was Betsy. Somebody second it. A medio second that we can have read his lips. <laughs> I, Sorry, I've second. <laughs> I've lost the screen, so I can't see him. Okay. So all in favor, everybody say aye. 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 Okay, good. We're see done. Ya. Okay.